Nick Ayer, Satini, Gonal Chisha in Kinney, Gay Sai, Hoots, Hoots, you do a sago, a puppet, oh, a puppet, city. Good to see you guys. Thank you to Hoots for telling us your name. Hoots uh, is a puppet called Hoots, and um, he's my friend, so. Puppets are a fun way to start conversation. We were just talking about how my nephew will jump right into talking to puppets like it's like it's his new best friend. I think I'm going to start using them more in class. Anyway, um, I have the phrase book open. I'm going to take you there in a moment. But for our warm up today, we're going to work on some translation questions that came from a student in this class and I thought it would be fun for us to work on them together. So, um, oh shoot, I always do this. Thursday you do a sock late for Reinach. At Gadechit Yanad to see a year. Jin cut cut late to Shuyaw Hiadis. So it's Thursday, uh, the month before the animals multiply, and 16 days have passed this month. So yeah, for our warm up today, like I was mentioning, uh, one of our classmates asked me to translate these questions from English to Lenget. And I can do this behind the scenes and it can take me a long time and then I can show it to you and be like, oh, I don't know if this is right. Or we can do it together and you can kind of see my process and then you can be part of the solution too. So I thought that might be fun. Um, and the student sent me maybe 16 questions. So I'm just gonna do four per day until we get pretty close to having them all. Um, one thing I want to mention is when you're translating from English to Lenget, I highly recommend going to the phrase book and finding something that's similar to your English phrase rather than getting really too fixated on how it's said in English. Um, because if you look at our beginning materials, our phrase books, like this one, which is Lenget Reynachsa, by the Downhowers, you can trust that the the Thinget phrases you're looking at are they're natural to the language that they came from elder speakers who grew up learning Thinget as their first language, and so you can kind of trust that they're coming from uh, Thinget Tundatani or Thinget way of thinking. Um, Thinget is a very complex and sophisticated language. So it takes quite a bit of expertise to correctly translate things and put it together the way you want. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we progress as a group. But for now, I just want to start, if you're a beginner and you have an English phrase, you want to translate it to Thinget, I think this is a good starting point. So the first question was, um, and these were phrases that the student thought they might want to say at celebration. <clears throat> so the, f the first four were, I hope to see you again, you look nice, I like your regalia, and can you meet for coffee? So we have like um, a few different styles of statements here. First one, I hope to see you again. Um, is there anything similar to this phrase that you all have heard before that you that you can think of? Yeah, Ziagen. Yeah. Or, um, to you, uh, you smile and wave. <laughs> smile and wave. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are good ones. So I'm going to do, um, I hope to see you again was what we're thinking of, but we can put our translations here. I might even make another column. Let's do that. Uh, insert column left. So we'll do our actual translations. And then this is the English phrase that we started with. So Ziagin is like saying later. 
And then what's the actual translation of tsuye ekwasetin? This one. Huh? It's a Sakun knows. Sakun, you got voluntold, sister. I'll see you again. I'll see you again, yeah. Ganachish, I'll see you again. Um now I'm now this now that we're doing this, I just remembered this other phrase I wanna add. And this one is, I hope it will be so. Another thing that's coming to mind is like this English phrase here, I hope to see you again. Like what is this? So the student, I was curious, like what they were actually trying to say, like, were they trying to say goodbye? Or were they trying to express a desire to see the person again? And I'm, like, I'm kind of familiar with, like we don't really have a phrase for goodbye or like we would have mm. seen it in our beginning workbook. And so, um, yeah, what did, what did the person really mean by, I hope to see you again? And yeah, is it just like a farewell or is it like, this is what I am feeling? You know what I mean? Yeah, just looking at the context of the questions, I kind of got the feel it was like maybe you run into each other at celebration and you're not sure if you'll cross paths again, but you hope so. Um, these were the, like, I hope to see you again. You look nice. I like your regalia. Yeah, that's kind of the feel I got. What about this next one? You look nice. Um, if you're not familiar, there's this chapter in Thingetika Inachsa, chapter three, and the topic is compliments, dating, schmoozing, and sweet talking. So this is a fun one for Valentine's Day, or maybe you guys will study them up for your evening time activities. But look at some of the compliments in here. They're pretty fun. Uh, you brushed your t teeth well. Repeat this one after me. Kedeng ye us ye ur. Kedeng ye us ye ur. Yeah, ye ur is your teeth. And so it's you washed them well. Kedeng is to do something well. If you add kedeng to an action, you're saying they did that action well. So, well, you washed your teeth. Um. You dressed nice. This looks good. This looks pretty similar. Um, so let's try this one. Yeah, Derek, I'm going to mute you just because there's a little bit of feedback. Um, so let's start with the end part. Uh, these last couple words. And you can just add the sh to this next word so that it goes into one word into one sound. She di uwu ye. She di uwu ye. And then ye ke a de she di uwu ye. Ye ke a de she di uwu ye. Yeah. Okay. Um, your shirt is. Uh, repeat these two words after me. Ikudasi. 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 Yeah. Um, to say it's fancy would be this word. Repeat this after me. Kashikai. Kashikai. Uh huh. And then kunach. Have you guys seen this word before? Kunach. What's that one mean? Very? very yeah good yeah it's very so let's practice this whole line repeat after me 
Really good. Your shirt is good. Um, you're dressed up. So this one would be okay. So let's start with his last word, and then I'll explain the S H. So repeat after me. Yidzene. Yidzene. Yeah. Yeah. This um looks like it means you dressed to dress. If you add this sh before a word like that to get dressed, it makes it reflexive, meaning you did it to yourself. So you dressed yourself. Ah, good. Ah. ah. And so we could we could say the whole thing. Yan shiedzene. Yan shiedzene. Ah. Um. If we say we're all dressed up, maybe we're all wearing our regalia standing together and we're looking at it, admiring it. We could say this last line. So repeat this after me. Yan shwutwidzene. Yan shwutwidzene. Ah, yeah, we dressed ourselves up. Um, these ones kind of remind me of the next two questions that were asked. You look nice and I like your regalia. So what I'm going to do is pick some phrases from the book that uh, correlate to these. And that's that will be my starting point for applying my English thought into a Tlingit conversation. So uh, first one is you look nice. We're going to say... Um, you're dressed nice. So we're going to change our English phrase. You're dressed nice. Pretty similar. And... Uh, okay, yeah, your hand is up. Is there a list of the different clinical names for regalia, like button blanket or mm. headband? That's a really good question. Let me think about it, and then if I don't think of it, we'll start one. Um, does anyone think of a resource right off the top of their head where they've seen a list like that in this class? Shaki'at. Mm, yeah, Shaki'at for a hat. Protectors of our head. Mm, nice. Okay, let's keep, let's keep thinking about that. Okay, I like your regalia. This kind of leads to that question too, the word regalia. I'm actually going to jump into the dictionary for this one and see if there's a translation of regalia. Okay, so under the entry for the English word regalia in the dictionary, we have dance paddle. Let's see what else we have. Dance mask, dancing leggings. So we could actually start. Let's start our list while we're here. I'll do that after. Okay, regalia in general, though, this these ones were specific items of regalia. Um, I know that clothing is like your clothing is in a uh, d. Okay. 
jumping around, but I want to go to the section on clothing. No, we were just at the Yeh Kuru, which is Raven Blanket, I think. In the dictionary? Um, wait. Is it? I'm not finding it in the dictionary, but... Um... Bawu is um, mountain goat wool or chill cat blanket. Oh, nice. And um, Nahain. While we're talking about regalia, I'm just taking a quick look through chapter 22 in Thinget There's some lists of clothing items. And a lot of these are pieces of regalia, vest, shirt. Headband. Chill cap blanket. Oh, here's button blanket. So let's do, I would say, um, huh? Where's the button blanket on your page? On page 66, I'm going to zoom in. Oh, yeah, it's right there. It is. Yeah. I'll zoom in so we can Kuru see. Better. Is the robe Kuru? Yeah, oh, why? Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Kuru is the robe. And then Kayuka Ut, I feel like it's button. Kayuka Ut, Kuru. So let's practice this one. This word um, for blanket is a pinched X and then a high tone double O and a W. So repeat after me. Ooh. 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 Good. Yeah. And then just this last sound, the O-O-T pinched. Oot. 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 Yeah. And the whole word. Kayuka oot. Hi, you go. This is then... cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? The Kayuka is the um, person's octopus sucker. Um, oh, okay. Does the button what? look like the suckers of an octopus? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where button comes from, right? Mm. So let's do the uh, whole phrase uh, button blanket, Kayuka Utku. The O O W, like my lips are already like in an O, like, and so the O O W, it's kind of like O. Oh, like, how did that go? Yeah, thanks for asking that. I I just um talked about this with my mentor when I was making recordings. He said for um, these sounds, they're called diphthongs where you have a double vowel, but then you do an extra either W or Y. So with a W, you're going to doing extra rounding. If there's a Y at the end, you're doing an extra stretching. You're stretching. So like in the phrase, for you all came here, that's a Y. It's important to pronounce that last Y. Um, elder speakers really hear it. For this word, do an extra rounding. Like your lips are already rounded for U, but if you compare it without the W, it would be ku. With with the W be ku. Do you hear a difference? Very subtle, but yeah. Yeah. Those are the kind of sounds that um, throw elders off if you don't make it. Uh, because it's, yeah, it's there for a reason. So I'm going to say in this one, I'm just going to use a specific uh, piece of regalia and I'll use button blanket. And so I'm, I'll start with the word for button blanket. And then I need to put it into a phrase that's along the lines of I like it. So let's see what we found. Um, 
I like it as a compliment. I'm going to scoot back up to the compliments and schmoozing section. And I love that this book has a section that's called schmoozing. <laughs> now the first thing in there has to do with brushing your teeth. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it was Valentine's Day, I um, went straight to this section and taught this to my students. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say that it's fancy. I'm going to say your button blanket is very fancy. So in this phrase, for your shirt is very fancy, we have <laughs> Do you guys remember which part means your shirt? Good <laughs> Now I'm going to replace that with button blanket. So I'm going to take this whole phrase and just swap out for button blanket. Hey, why is it underlined? So this is is your and when you say that something is yours you have to add the it in front of it and then you also have to add the relational suffix at the end that to mark that okay we're talking about something that belongs to someone so instead of Koo, i'm adding this extra sound at the end Koo, add a short u so who is but is blanket Koo is your blanket so these are things I have to add to make it yours. I'm just going to make them bold here. Good night. Uh, yeah. Okay. So those are things we have to do. And now I'm going to say your button blanket is. Do you remember the translation? What's kunach? Very fancy. Very. Ah, very fancy. Good. Good memory. So now we started with this phrase in English, I like your regalia. We learned some different words for different regalia. And now we learn to piece phrases together to um, get to our point. So we had a phrase, we found one that said, your shirt is very fancy. We change it to your button blanket is very fancy. It's a compliment. I feel like it's in the spirit of what we started with. Okay, last one before we move into our lesson because we're going to do breakout rooms today. Um, can you meet for coffee? Any ideas so far just off the top of your heads? Any of these words stand out to you? Coffee. Oh. Ah, and what is coffee? Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. I know E is you. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, uh, I'm get go... would be a yes or no question. Good, yeah. Let's put a get here. Coffee. And then I'm going to add, there's a couple words here I'm going to put blanks for now. Um, like the time is it's time for coffee. Get over gawu is time for. What's that? Also do a sock. Um, it's something o'clock. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's add that one because that's from the same section. Um, it's coffee. It's coffee time. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. And that would be coffee. Oops. It's coffee time. Meet. I'll share this one because I say it a lot in class. I've never written it down for you, but it's. Quick question under the uh, second line, the ga wu, 
does that mean like the time your your time because the, the who is possessive of yeah good question thank you for asking that because we were just talking about it so we have this uh so gao is time but now Soku noticed that we added this uh sound at the end this relational suffix gao wu so it went from gao to gao wu you have to add a relational suffix when you make something possessive make it belong to somebody like your time my time I gao wu, ach gao wu. Um, in this case we are relating time to something that comes before it, which is kahui. It doesn't mean that it belongs to the coffee, but we're saying that it's time. It's coffee time. So let me jump to more examples of this where you can see it in Um under and you guys have such good memory too because there's a whole section where they have phrases like this. It's around food. Where's the chapter on food? Cooking, eating, and talking about food. This is my second favorite section of the book. And the first page is all about, uh, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna zoom in. It's lunchtime. So lunch is the midday food. That's what this phrase means. So repeat this after me for lunch. Sit gao san at kha. Sit gao san at Okay. And it's time for the midday meal or lunch. You add gao wu. So repeat after me the whole phrase. Sit gao san at kha gao wu aya. It goes on at Yeah, it's time for lunch. So that's why you have this relational suffix. It's not necessarily possessive, but it is relating the concept of time to being time for something. So it's mm -hmm. lunchtime. Ah, what atsukonartish. Thank you for asking. Um, kahui. I'm gonna put yes right here. Kahui yes This one, I need to think about this. We. This one means we are meeting. Can you meet for coffee? I'm gonna put a blank here because we still have some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to make time for our breakout rooms. So I'll pause it there. Uh, any comments or questions about this translation exercise? Goodness, Jeesh. This is so helpful when you're looking at starting to build sentences to swap words in and out. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad it was helpful. Okay, um, there's a question in the chat about, uh, does anyone know where the darts go on a vest? Any sewers in here? I have not made a vest, I'm so sorry. No problem. It's a dart. A, a dart is where you take it in in the back, like if you're- if For tailoring. You're, yeah. If it's too loose, you can put in a dart. You kind of fold the material and then sew it in place to make it fit better, to tailor it. Mm. Okay. Um, let's skip our review today of, of vocab because you guys are pretty comfortable with them. And we're gonna do a quick run through of our conversation practice and then I'll send you to the breakout rooms. So first I'll share this to give you all a copy. Anyone with the link can view. I'm gonna put this in the chat so you can open it up. And now you have the slides. Um, I'll keep mine up for you all to, to see while we do our run through. And just for reference, they'll be, they'll start on slide 26. 
Okay, so I'll do a run through and then I'll send you off on your own to practice. First section, what are they eating? So an overview before we look at the drill slides. Uh, just please repeat each line after me. Da sa acha. Da sa acha. Tuk acha. Tuk acha. Tuk acha. Gat acha. Gat acha. Ta acha. Ta acha. Danti acha. Danti acha. Now we've practiced them, and I'll ask the top line, and you all respond with the bottom line, please. Da sa acha. 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 Zanti acha. Next section of conversation. What do you have? Overview. Repeat after me. Da sa iju wu. Da sa iju wu. Da sa iju wu. Da sa iju wu. Yao ke iji wo. Yao ke iji wo. Ah, yao achji wo. Ah, yao achji wo. Or, like, let yao achji. Like, let yao achji. Okay. And I'll read the top line. You all respond with the bottom line. Da sa iji wu. Da achji wu. Yao ge iji wu. Yao achji wu. Yao ge iji wu. Laik. Laik yao achji. Ni owa. Grammar note, just as a reminder, when you don't have something, you change from the positive form to the negative form. When you're changing to the negative form, you add the word tlech to make it not. And then achji wu changes to achji. So positive form, repeat after me, achji wu. Achji wu. And then the negative form, repeat after me, tlech achji. Yeah. Uh, I thought that earlier, like the wu at the end is the it indicates it's somebody's. Yeah, it's a. In this case, if we look at the, oh, I don't have it on this one. If we look at the gloss, there's another note on. Um, I have Achjiwu. So, in this case, the wu is, um, means is at. So, the negative form, since it isn't in your possession, you don't add the wu, you just say Achji. So, it's pretty similar to the relational suffix. Um, it's closer to the gusu hit, you do hit, that du you're adding at the end is similar to this ji wo. Good, good observation. So let me see. That was, and then we'll do these. Conversation drills. Two friends run into each other. Um, this will be the last one we practice, and then I'll send you on your own. So please repeat after me. How hot ye good? How hot ye good? Ah, ye get a 
Okay, good. <clears throat> so I'll read the top line and you please read the bottom line. Ha ha ya good. Um, I think that's enough. If you guys get ambitious, you can do this next section, but just to honor your time, I'm not going to do a run through on where you're staying right now. So it looks like you guys have the slideshow. I'm going to make you some breakout rooms. 